It's official. Janet Jackson's song Rhythm Nation is a cybersecurity threat. It apparently contains a frequency which breaks laptops, or at least it used to. On his blog, Windows developer Raymond Chen recounted a time where a major computer manufacturer, very specific there, found that playing the song on one of their laptops would not only crash it, but any other laptop that was sitting nearby. Very strange. It turns out that there was something in the recording of the song that matched the natural resonant frequency of the specific 5400 RPM hard drives that the laptops use. Play the song, the hard drive pulls a Tacoma Narrows bridge and fails. This story spread like wildfire last week because honestly, who could resist? This song has a secret dark frequency which can break your computer. One song has so much power, it can make some old laptops crash. <laughs> Oh, they're off, they're off. But honestly, the thing I'm amazed about is that amid all of this hype, nobody seemed interested in discovering what the musical element was in Rhythm Nation that would cause the laptops to fail. It just was presented as a frequency. It has to do with the frequency in the song. And honestly, the truth is just way cooler. It's the baseline. Base. The baseline is the thing which caused those laptops' hard drives to crash. Yes, a baseline so sick, it is a cybersecurity threat. To figure out why exactly and how you too could potentially use these ideas to break laptops if you so chose. Oh my god, that actually works. <laughs> We have to talk a little bit about music theory, a little bit about resonance, and a little bit about music history. Let's get into it, y'all. This video is brought to you by Curiosity Stream and my streaming service, Nebula. It's time to give a devil, let's work Part one, a brief musical analysis of Rhythm Nation. Rhythm Nation was written by Janet Jackson and the songwriting team of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis for her 1989 album, Rhythm Nation 1814. Now the tune is in E. The bass synth and the guitar hammer out that low E over and over again in a one chord vamp that holds the whole tune together. The parts are slightly different. The guitar riff sounds like this. The synth bass sounds like this. And the two of them together sound like this. The vocal melody, at least for the verses anyway, is very syncopated. It's hitting a lot of those 16th note offbeats and uses primarily notes from the minor. This is characterized by the note G natural, the minor third in the key of E. But interestingly, the main hook of the tune, We Are a Part of the Rhythm Nation, isn't in minor. It instead uses notes from the major pentatonic, including a C sharp and a G sharp, the major third in the key of E. <laughs> Janet riffs on top of the hook, and when she does, she uses the minor third, G natural. <laughs> This in theory shouldn't work because you got G sharp and G natural happening at the same time, but it does because it's an example of blues harmony where minor thirds and major thirds interact in a very specific way to create a very specific sound. Now blues historically is often associated with the key of E, the key that Rhythm Nation is in because E is the low string of the guitar. Guitar was an important part of the early blues and so a lot of blues vocabulary that was developed is based on what feels good to play on this instrument. Don't worry, this will relate back to laptops failing, I swear. E is an important part of the blues, and blues harmony is an important part of funk grooves. In the case of Rhythm Nation, the funk guitar riff in E, as well as the syncopated melody, is likely a nod to the classic 70s funk tune by Sly and the Family Stone, Thank You for Letting Me Be Myself. Because we keep hitting E over and over again, which is a staple of funk harmony, you might think that this is the offending frequency which was causing the laptops to fail. But there is something wrong here, because any tune that is hammering on the low E string of the guitar should have caused this. And because the blues is so popular, laptop hard drives should have been failing left and right. Bedroom metal guitarists would be the real cybersecurity threat, not Janet Jackson. So the question then becomes, why specifically Rhythm Nation, part two, 
mechanical resonance. Hard drives in particular are susceptible to vibration, like this video of a guy shouting at hard drives in a data center and then crashing them. Quality content right there. Raymond Chen's blog suggests that vibrations caused by exciting the natural resonant frequency of these particular 5400 RPM hard drives was the thing that was causing the laptops to fail. It's how singers can break wine glasses, for example. They find the wine glasses' natural frequency, which is determined by some of the wine glasses' physical characteristics, sing that frequency, and then the wine glass vibrates itself into non-existence. <laughs> it's like pushing somebody on a swing. You have to push back at the right time with the correct frequency, and when you do, very little effort can send somebody quite far. So what frequency failed those laptops? Well, it's difficult to know because we don't know the exact hard drive that was being used, and mechanical resonance is dependent on the physical characteristics of a given object. In a video that he did on this story, Dave Plummer was able to replicate hard drive failures with a resonant peak at 66 hertz, which is very cool but that would probably only work with the particular hard drive that he tested. Why 66 hertz? I don't rightly know. And 66 hertz is also roughly a C, which doesn't make any sense because Rhythm Nation is an E, not C. I was able to find a paper on resonance in 2.5 millimeter laptop hard drive specifically, which suggests a strong resonant peak at 87.5 hertz, which when I found this was very exciting. Why? When we load a recording of Rhythm Nation into Audacity and analyze it for resonant peaks, we find a very similar frequency at 84 hertz, which just so happens to be the note E, which is obvious because the tune is an E. But if you export that Audacity data, we find that the resonant peak is not 84 hertz precisely, it's 84.2, which is a little bit higher than an equal tempered E. It's not E exactly. What's going on here? Now, those of you with perfect pitch have probably been tearing your hair out this whole video because Rhythm Nation is not tuned to A440. It's been tuned up about 40 cents to roughly A450, if we're thinking about it that way. And that's the secret here. Rhythm Nation is not really an E. Part three. Varus speed. Orchestras in the 19th century were in an arms race. They found that by tuning slightly higher than the orchestras from the next town over, they could play the same pieces of music, but the music would sound more brilliant and more evocative and more intense. Now the standard pitch of the era had been set in 1859 by the French government so that A would equal 435 Hertz, the so-called diapason normal, but this was often ignored, and orchestras kept tuning their A's higher and higher through a phenomenon called pitch inflation. A's could reach as high as 455 hertz. Even today, orchestras in Europe tune a little bit higher than the standard pitch of A equals 440 hertz. Some orchestras tune to 442, 444, and beyond. Music can sound more exciting, more intense, more alive if you juice those tuning numbers ever so slightly. In the 1970s, recording engineers started using a trick to get kind of the same effect, making music more exciting by increasing the pitch. By taking the master recording of a song and using the Varus speed function on a tape deck, you could speed up a recording by a certain percentage, usually one to 2%. Not only would the music get faster, but the pitch would increase a little bit as well, making the whole thing sound more intense. This was often done on the radio single version of recordings to make the radio single stand out more. You can really hear this effect on Jerry Rafferty's song, Baker Street. Listen to how much more exciting and intense the single version is. Which one would you rather listen to? I know I would rather listen to the single version. It's more exciting because it's a little bit faster and the pitch is a little bit higher. If we slowed Rhythm Nation down, we in theory could match its pitch to A440 and get a sense of what it originally sounded like before it got that Verispeed treatment. It doesn't sound quite as exciting as the actual recording. Yeah, that's much better for the dance vibe, right? Yeah, 
Now, what does this have to do with the laptops failing and blues harmony? Well, follow me here. Blues is often in the key of E because E is the low string of a guitar and guitar was the most important instrument in the early blues. So, funk is a repetitive rhythmic genre that's often based on blues harmony vamps, often in the key of E. Funk in the 1970s had a generally more chill and relaxed vibe that you can hear in Sly and the Family Stone's Thank You for Letting Me Be Myself. But just like the European orchestras had in the 19th century with their pitch inflation, funk went through a similar thing. By the 1980s, it was expected that funk be more dancey and more hype. And one way of getting this kind of feel is by slightly speeding up the recording of the master, changing both the tempo and the pitch. Rhythm Nation was likely recorded at A440 and then sped up ever so slightly. And when the tune was sped up to match that particular hyped dance feel of the 1980s, the low E happened to match the natural resonant frequency of certain laptop hard drives. Again, we don't know exactly what the hard drives were that we're talking about, but chances are their resonant frequency was 84.2 hertz. This is why Rhythm Nation, and only Rhythm Nation, not any other tune, not any other funk tune in the key of E, is the cybersecurity threat, because Rhythm Nation was the one that was sped up. I've been looking for other popular songs with similar resonant peaks as Rhythm Nation that could have potentially triggered those laptop hard drive failures. The closest I've found is Metallica's For Whom the Bell Tolls, which was recorded a bit sharp. <laughs> Loading it into Audacity shows a similar 84 hertz peak. You would think that because the blues is so popular, guitar is so popular, and that Verispeed trick was used quite often, this would have been more of a problem for laptop hard drives, but apparently it was just Rhythm Nation which caused this. So to come up with a bass line so sick it breaks hard drives, you need to know the exact natural resonant frequency of that model of hard drive, which I can't imagine is an easy thing to look up unless you're testing things out. In this case, maybe you could find a hard drive like Dave Plummer's and write a tune with some serious resonant peaks around 66 hertz. In that case, in theory, you could write this mythical, godlike baseline. At the end of the blog post, Raymond Chen mentioned how this whole problem was solved. The manufacturer worked around the problem by adding a custom filter in the audio pipeline that detected and removed the offending frequencies during audio playback. So, no more threat. Oh well. Raymond continued, and I'm sure they put a digital version of a do not remove sticker on that audio filter. Though I'm worried that in the many years since the workaround was added, nobody remembers why it's there. Hopefully their laptops are not still carrying this audio filter to protect against damage to a model of hard drive they are no longer using. That's kind of a fun prospect to consider, right? Maybe because of Rhythm Nation, 84.2 hertz, a slightly uptuned E, has just been removed from all laptop audio from a certain computer manufacturer. I think the reason why this story is interesting for me and has resonated with me and apparently a lot of other people is because it's a reminder that music has a real physical impact not only on us, but the world around us. Music has real physical power. It is vibrations in space. It's a tantalizing intersection between technology and musical affect. And I think that's just really neat. And so just like how Joshua blew the horns at the Battle of Jericho, causing the walls to come tumbling down, Janet Jackson's bass line on Rhythm Nation caused the walls of the laptop to come tumbling down. You, you, get, you get the metaphor that I'm going for, right? Okay. Speaking of metaphors and other literary devices, how's this for a seg? You can find educational content that explores things like that over on Nebula, the creator-owned streaming service. It's kind of like YouTube, but just for the kinds of videos that you would actually want to watch. I have my whole catalog up on there, including some bonus videos that you can only watch on Nebula. It's a great place to watch and discover quality content ad-free as well as support your favorite educational creators. By clicking the link in the description or the link right here on the screen, you're not only supporting this channel, but all of the creators over on Nebula as we create videos that aim to engage the world in a more meaningful way. Thanks everybody so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, everybody, let's hope we don't break any laptops with this one. <clears throat> Peace.